Hello everyone. I know we're heading into winter break and uh, we're also heading toward closing out the 2022 calendar year. We've got a great video uh, that highlights all the amazing work and special work that our educators, our classified staff, our support staff, all of you out there in the schools and departments do uh, to support students and families. So I hope you enjoy the video. I also hope you enjoy your break that you take care of yourself, step back away from the work, and be safe. Uh, we want you back safe and sound in 2023. Here's to you for a fantastic 2022. You make a difference every day in the community, for your families, for your students. And uh, here's to a, a wonderful 2023 as we head into a new year with promise and high expectations for everyone. Thank you. Students like Eli and Ari are sprucing up their math skills after pandemic learning loss in students across Admiral County. And they say it's getting competitive. 24 is a card game that has four numbers on each card and your target goal is to always make 24. Children at Meriwether Lewis are gearing up for a tournament. Five minus three equals two, two plus two equals four, four times six equals 24. You can use any four of the operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So 24 is a game that helps develop uh, computational fluency. And what we know in um, our schooling and in uh, early numeracy is that it's the foundation to higher order thinking. I studied for like a week at home playing my mom and dad and I kept beating them. Since the kids can beat adults, now it's time to compete against one another. And it's a pretty competitive game and also makes like, helps you learn math fast and like do it on your head really fast, which I got really good at now that I played 24. While the fun is an added bonus, in past years this game has improved SOL scores. With students back in person, it's a tool they're using again. What I notice is that as we build confidence, it helps shift that math mindset, and what goes along with that confidence is competence. A group of eighth grade students at Henley Middle School in Crozet placed second in nationals in the recent We the People competition. Annual We the People competitions are sponsored by the Center for Civic Education. This year's schools who made nationals attended virtually. Faculty at Henley Middle School are proud of their students and explain how this feat might shape them as citizens. For us, I think the overall goal is just to create students who are more invested in our community, in civics, in developing an understanding of how the government is impacting them and what they can do. Local students have collected over 11,000 pounds of food for the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank. The 2022 school food drive was the most successful in its 11-year history. The food collected will provide 8,849 meals to the hungry. The fundraising effort was led by Albemarle High School students Kat Ravachandran and Emily Warren. It's a day where we culminate celebrating Black History Month by honoring Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, each year, uh, a, a student from each grade level is nominated uh, by their teachers and um, their peers have a part in this as well. And they nominate someone who exemplifies uh, all that Martin Luther King Jr. himself stood for and shared with us uh, and that we admire about him today. We celebrate our, our diversity at Woodbrook. And so to welcome families in today, um, to be here and to hear the words from the classroom teachers describing uh, how their children exemplify these qualities um, is really special. When I heard about that, um, I was proud and I knew I was doing the right thing for being a leader to the community. I, I love to help my friends. Them help me and I help them. Every day if I be nice, I be kind, I don't be mean, I will help some people. Uh, we all usually have a box of tissue with us because it's very moving and meaningful to this school and to our community.
Now an Albemarle County school with many students using free and reduced lunch options has a unique new way to help feed children. A new community garden championed by the Building Goodness Foundation and Piedmont Master Gardeners is officially open. Students at Greer Elementary are fostering their green thumbs and taking the food home after the harvest. Here at Greer, a lot of the students live in apartment buildings and they don't have a lot of access to nature and to growing things. Many of the warm weather veggies will be ready to take home by the end of this school year. Avid is um, a class where it prepares you for high school and college so you know what to expect and how to expect it. Part of the Avid curriculum for eighth grade, they had to think of a community service project. And so this is the first year that we actually took a community service project idea and put it into effect. So they were thinking about different types of events that they could do. Some of them weren't possible at this time, like a bake sale or so forth. But they had thought about a walkathon. and We had to decide on a charity, and that's where we went from there. The students did all the work. They contacted VIA. They contacted the teachers and staff to let them know about the walk. They made flyers. They made a sponsor sheet. We learned a lot of organization skills and we learned how to work with others a lot because it you know, took a lot of us to be able to put this together. Every year for the last 19 years, we've been part of the American Heart Association Jump Rope and Hoops for Heart. Now it's called Kids Heart Challenge. And we've raised over $201,000 in the last 19 years. The kids really enjoy it. Every grade, kindergarten through fifth grade. We do our uh, jump rope and basketball units during the fundraising campaign, and we talk a lot about the heart, uh, as February is Heart Month as well. Um, we've been raising money um, for um, children who have um, heart diseases and um, helping them out a little bit. This year we've raised $7,084 in the last five weeks. We talk about the American Heart Association and what it is and what, what we raise money for and we talk about how it saves lives and the science behind how they know so much more about the heart now and surgeries and education and research than they did before. Well, I just like to raise money to help people and it's good to donate to something really important and I would say the Kids Heart Challenge is really important. My philosophy is to make class as fun as possible. Emily Anderson. If students aren't coming to class excited, then I'm doing it wrong. As a sixth grade science teacher at Lakeside Middle School, and she's wrapping up the school year on a high note. She was named Educator of the Year by nonprofit Charlottesville Business Innovation Council. This award honors a local kindergarten through 12th grade teacher who incorporates innovation, entrepreneurship, and technological achievement in the classroom. Anderson has found success by implementing video games during class time. Minecraft especially has been so valuable. Hello, let me look at you. Look at you. Minecraft, Anderson says, teaches students how to survive in a three-dimensional world. She says the game has promoted teamwork and student achievement, especially throughout COVID. Even when I was teaching virtually, I could open up a Minecraft room and kids could join from their home and we could all be in the same virtual space together, working on things together and with a team. Zachary, one of her students. Right now we're working on an element escape room and his peer Armand are creating virtual scientific experiments that would be rather dangerous to perform in the classroom. Like we can build like a volcano or an explosion in Minecraft and it wouldn't actually physically destroy anything. He says Anderson's class. Probably one of my most favorite classes. Um, she's an amazing teacher and she lets us, like she actually lets us do this sort of stuff. It's uh, really important to the, to the school and the faculty and staff that our grounds are kept nice and clean during the school year. You know, it's a time in the school year where we want to be outdoors and what we've been through for the last two years has encouraged for more outdoor activity. So, you know, having our grounds in a position that they look that they do and they are nice and upkept is important to our staff. and. Our employees are the ones that should be appreciated for that. They spend many, many hours. You know, they come out of the winter months of uh, working snow removal duty and different working on equipment. And then, you know, we get into mowing season. Typically, uh, typically a pretty busy day. I mean, you got to kind of, you got to kind of like being outside. I mean, because we're, we're outside when it's hot, we're outside when it's cold. I mean, it's a, uh, but you know, the guys I got, I got a really good crew of guys that. Uh, come in and work hard for us and uh, uh, take pride in what they're doing and uh, 
couldn't, couldn't, couldn't ask for a better, uh, better group of guys. I'd like to thank all of our employees for rising to the challenges of the past two years and continuing to do all the things we do for our schools on a daily basis. When you ask someone about the school or when you picture a school, usually you think of probably the playground, possibly the principal's office, but very seldom you think about the school nurse's office. During the pandemic, we have really started to realize how important our school nurses are. On an ordinary day or during an ordinary year, they would probably be dispensing medicine to students or taking care of some of the ill kids. But during COVID, they've really had to become um, experts at things that they weren't experts at before. I'm Crystal Jackson, and I'm the school nurse for Jack Jewett Middle School. And I've always done OBGYN or pediatrics, um, so this is just kind of right in the realm of it. You are not just a nurse, you're a teacher, um, and you are that, that role model for them um, or that mother figure for them. Um, and so some kids don't take things as well as others, um, so you just have to kind of calm them down and let them know that you know, you're here to help them and that it's going to be okay. May 6th is uh, National School Lunch Hero Day and our uh, school cafeteria workers are definitely the unsung heroes in the school. I believe uh, they're working hard every day and have every single day since uh, March of 2020 when the schools, uh, everyone shut down, but we kept working. We were in the schools preparing meals. Um, our love is for the children to see their faces and to know that we are providing something that's essential to the school day. A lot of hard work, but um, fulfilling because we know that if some, some of the kids, this is their only meal during the day. So I feel that even though it's been challenging this year, it's worth it at the end because the kids are happy and they're fed. We are just uh, very, very grateful for the staff that we have and how they're so dedicated to uh, come in every day, work hard, and um, do it for the students. Albemarle County Public Schools buying its first Type A buses to help with the driver shortage. The director of transportation says they bought two of the vehicles and they'll be used starting this fall. The bus can seat up to 14 students. Each type A bus costs about $75,000, where the big ones are about $125. Charmaine White from the Department of Transportation says here's the big thing. Drivers are not required to have a commercial driver's license to drive the vehicle. You don't need a CDL. She says they hope this helps with the driver shortage as there's still about 15 people short. Well, the Community Climate Collaborative and the Virginia Discovery Museum teamed up with the Albemarle County School Science teachers, uh, putting together climate action kits for students in the area. CBS 19's Franklin Spain joins us in the studio live with more on this unique collaboration. Franklin. Rick, they put together these climate action activities kits for fourth graders enrolled in Albemarle County Public Schools that will benefit over 800 students. These kits will include solar power night lamps that will charge by the sun. They, are, they will be able to grow their own garden with the seeds that are included. With these kits, students will get a better understanding of home energy. Director of Communications of C3, Terry Kent, says these kids will be able to put an energy scavenger hunt together and use these tools to help them learn more about natural resources. They're going to take these kits home, they're going to interact with them and talk about energy and all that sinking in and it's really making that connection so that they can lead and, and do better. Sometimes trees are both kind of because if you cut them all of them, they won't grow back far, like grow back really fast. Um, you can turn off your lights when you're not using them because then like your bill will go down and you don't have to pay much. You can ride your bike to school instead of taking a bus. There will be that family partnership where they can teach their families what they're learning and help their family get involved as well to have an impact on the community.